This is Chris Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. Today, I've got another solo series. I've got a house behind me. It's a small one. I'm gonna try to paint this thing solo in two days. I did another solo series where I did a two-story, very complicated house, and it took me about eight days. So if you wanna see me paint this house, alone in two days. Stay tuned for this video. This is also going to be part of Painter's Care. It's going to be giving back to our community and a World War II veteran. This guy served our country. PPG is going to be providing the paint free of charge due to this man's service to our country. So if you want to see this video, me painting a World War II veteran's house solo in two days, stay tuned for this video. All right, we're out here. It is day two, actually, because I was out here yesterday. I did the power washing. It took me about an hour to power wash this house. Uh, very simple, easy. It's just single story. I, don't, I think I'm gonna be able to do this house with probably a six foot ladder maybe. Well, I got one peak. I'm gonna have to get my extension out ladder out to uh, do the two peaks on the sides, but very simple, easy to do. I should be able to paint this house in two days solo alone. I'm gonna be using uh, PPG paints. They're providing the paint here because this is part of our painter's care program, giving back to our community and our uh, veterans. This guy is a World War II veteran. I'm thankful to be able to come out here and paint his house. He's an amazing gentleman. So uh, thank you to PPG for providing the paint. And this is going to be hopefully two days painting the house. I'm gonna be using PPG paint. I'm not sure what paint they're gonna be bringing out. They're gonna be bringing it here pretty soon. We'll see what their paint is gonna be. I've used their interior and exterior paints. Great paints to use, um, especially their ceiling paint. But enough talking, let's get working. I'm gonna start the prepping process. There's not a lot of prep work to do. The, uh, the previous paint job, there was a lot of caulking done on it. So uh, there's not a lot of caulking to do and a little bit of sanding, a little bit of priming. We're gonna show you that. I'm going to be able to get painting on this house actually today. I'm, my goal is to actually spray the body, do the prep and spray the body today and then do the trim and the front door tomorrow. But anyways, enough talking. For the second time, let's go get painting. So I'm getting everything ready to start my prepping and I always like to carry multiple tubes of caulking with me so I don't have to keep walking back and forth when I run out of caulking. So I'll keep two tubes in my pockets and then I'll start off with a tube in my caulking gun. I'm gonna be using, I've got a, a condition of called wax bleed on this house. I'm gonna be using a fast dry oil primer to prime the wax bleed condition, which is wax hydrocarbons coming to the surface of the paint, which will cause an adhesion issue you know, with the paint. If you've never heard of that condition, um, I've got a video talking about it and how to remedy it. So this is our, my last house exterior for the season. The weather's cooling down drastically and when it starts to cool down, it's a lot more difficult to paint a house in a day or a couple days because the paints don't dry as fast. It's hard to mask over the top of paints when they're drying slower stuff. So it definitely slows the process down. I'm gonna start, um, I got a little bit of sanding here. I like using a paint eater. These discs don't clog up with paint and they sand and grind extremely fast. This is a Wagner paint eater.
helps the paint eater makes the sanding, grinding paint down really fast. Feathers the edges of the paint nicely so they're not uh, as prominent anymore. You know, with, when you paint over it, now all this bare wood, I'm gonna go over it with Peel Bond as the primer and that will help feather this out also. You could go to the extent of replacing all this the customer doesn't want to it all comes down to you know customers budget what they can afford um, this is brick mold and it wouldn't be that difficult to replace it but you know it has to be within their budget you can tell where he's gone but i just put it on super thick heavy we'll try to clean out their gutters here too to help remedy this because if you solve this problem but you don't solve the problem of the gutters um, overflowing down here it's just gonna continue to cause an issue with the siding
not my last solo series and people asked you know why am i just hand doing this primer going around and there's not that much to do and so i don't want to load up a sprayer because you could load up a sprayer and do it but peel bond is a super heavy product so you'd have to load up a larger sprayer to prime with and and then you really have to back brush it anyways to get it pushed in and get everything sealed up and enhanced penetration and adhesion by back brushing or back rolling you could roll it too i just always liked brushing and just the feel of being able to get it in with a brush versus a roller See, I used cardboard shields just down here just to protect the deck so I didn't hit the deck with the paint eater. Also, you know, wearing eye protection. I'm wearing the, it's not just regular sunglasses I'm wearing, I'm wearing edge eye, eye safety wear. So, especially when you're using a grinder, definitely always want to, you know, wear safety gear when grinding. Last thing you want to do is get something in your eye and have to leave the job site to go to the doctor, you know, because you weren't protecting your eyes good enough. I'm going to get this caulking off here. There's, I'm going to re caulk this. I'm gonna put one coat on here. I'm gonna let this dry. And then I'm gonna put another coat and I'll eventually mask with frog tape when I do my second coat up against this metal so I don't get anything on this metal on my next coat.
See, there's caulking underneath there, so I'm gonna just cut it in right up against that caulking. like this door was recently replaced. Down here, once I do this trim, I'm not going to caulk up against the trim here until I trim it out. Once I trim it out, I'll caulk up against there. That way I don't get a caulking on the vinyl on that, on that slider. a couple more windows down here the bottom of the siding is in pretty bad condition we'll have to deal with that it's got to be really careful that is really really brittle you know here's another condition where people have asked me you know do you cut out the caulking or just caulk over, you know, most of the time we're caulk, um, caulking over the existing caulking, but this is a good scenario where you actually want to pull out the, the caulking because this caulking's in bad shape and you don't want to caulk over this because you're not going to be able to make it look good. So I'm just going to cut this out, and redo these seams, let this dry out a little bit. I'm just being really careful because this, say, the siding is extremely brittle in this area. See why yeah I like these knives I got my knife and my five in one together the two-edge knife is just one tool 
Um, it's another one of those absolute game changing tools that you know, every painter should have. This here is another reason I like wearing gloves, sticking your fingers up underneath the siding. You never know what's underneath there. You know, what's gonna catch your finger, cut your finger, scrape your finger. But I wanna get that all cleaned out under there. Getting ready to do this oil primer here. And I don't wanna, I'm gonna be rolling it with a nine inch roller because I just got this small area to do. I don't wanna load up a sprayer because then you're gonna to have to clean up with mineral spirits and that's just the mess and it's gonna take a long time. Faster just to roll it out. Just use cardboard shields to keep any splatter, you know, off of the pavers. Now you only have to, you know, prime, have to prime the whole house. You only have to prime the areas that wax bleed shows up. And the best way to determine that is when you're, who's ever power washing will take, identify those areas. We typically take a spray can of spray paint and every area that has wax bleed on it, we just put an X with a can of spray paint that shows us, hey, there's wax bleed right here and this area needs to be primed. Uh, this house is, I power washed it, so I know exactly this was really the only area that had it where it needed to be primed. The rest of the house, you know, the water acted like, you know, it should act on a house this old or the paint this old, I know the paint's probably 10, 12 years old or so. But in the afternoon, this side, the sun's gonna hit this here pretty soon and it gets really, really hot because it's the afternoon sun. I'll tell you this, primer is just, if you're spraying it, it's just absolutely nasty stuff. It's, um, you know, you, when we spray it, we always wear a monkey suit. You definitely um, do not spray this stuff without a monkey suit. It gets on your skin, gets on your clothes. Your clothes stink like heck. It's one way to stink up your house and really make your wife mad. You know, coming home with this stuff all over your skin and clothes. Don't um, don't try to roll too fast either, you know, because it just will cause it to splatter. So just slowly roll. Use a good quality roller, even though you're going to throw it away. Like I said, I'm using a Premier white woven roller because it's going to splatter less than if you use something cheap. This color originally was a pretty dark color too, and the color contributed to it. We're doing it a light gray this time, which the siding won't get nearly as hot. So it's gonna, a lot of bugs on the one side, there's a lot of cinch bugs, and if you've never used bug juice, bug juice is a great product you can put in your paint that kills flying and crawling insects that land on the house um no so something that you can do is to make um little upsell to your customers if you're a professional painter putting bug juice and it actually works really good i put it in houses gone back five six seven years later and it's still killing spiders and bugs that are 
crawling on the house. It's a great, great product that I've used for years and years. We are going to be spraying with PPGs, timeless, so exterior paint and primer. Everything's almost ready to start loading up. I think this house, it's a pretty small house. I got eight gallons of body that I'll begin just dumping in here, boxing in. I'm just gonna be masking really fast. So I'll be masking over the top of the trim because I'll be pulling it because I'm not gonna leave my masking overnight. So the masking goes really fast when you're pulling your masking same day. I do see I got a downspout right here I need to take off. So I always remove the downspouts so that way I can paint behind, behind them. And I just put them on buckets and spray them. And I got some dirt over here so I don't have to have drop cloths underneath them. So I'll set them on buckets to spray them. I'm typically going to run on my sprayers, my large sprayer, at least 100 feet of hose. This is an 840. If I got 1140, I run 150 feet of hose, starting with 3 8. This is two 50 foot quarter inch hoses with my own lime green custom whip, a uh, gun whip. Definitely don't want to be spraying without a, a whip. I do see people out there still these days spraying without a whip and all it's going to do is cause you a lot of fatigue, wrist and arm fatigue if you don't have a whip on there.
in every video I shoot, somebody's like, well, what about the car in the garage getting overspray on it? With these doors, once these doors are closed, they're sealed 100%. And no overspray is gonna go through the slats of this door. Been doing this masking process for over 20 years and I've never had overspray go through a door because they're sealed 100% once they're closed. So, you get asked that question in every single video I do when I'm spraying a garage door. So, and I've had expensive, expensive cars in the garage and never once got overspray on them. So I've just masked the weather strip like that. I'm gonna close the garage door all the way. And then here's the next thing I get asked all the time is I put two rows of paper and this is what I've been doing for 20 some years too, spraying the doors and I've never got over spray outside the concrete. Outside the paper, actually. And this is just a matter of using the right tip, using the right pressure. Don't spray in the wind. Don't spray with oil-based paint in cool weather or if it's humid outside, you know, you're not comfortable, put a drop cloth out, a runner out in front of this. But I'm 100% confident that door right there is not gonna, or the concrete's not gonna get over spray on it. And but you know, once again, this is water-based paints. Live in a dry climate, it's nice and warm today. If anything falls to the ground, it's gonna fall to the ground as just silica dust. You don't want these things touching the house that you just painted and scratching it all up. So there we go. I'm gonna take this light off and then we're gonna shoot this garage door.
and I'll show you, I'll give you a couple tips spraying garage doors. I see a lot of people doing them a lot of different ways. And I'll give you some pointers how I do it and talk about why I do it the way I do it. All right, so I'm gonna spray this garage door here. And what I wanna do is when I spray this garage door, I'm gonna just walk the distance one time. So the panels run this direction, but I'm gonna spray it up and down and I'll walk the distance once. If I spray it the way the panels go, I'm gonna be walking this door multiple times and all that's gonna do is cause more work and more walking through the day. So I wanna walk the distance just one time spray it from top to bottom, overlap 50%, and then I'll have the door done. You don't have to spray it vertically as long as you, um, or horizontally, you can spray it vertically as long as you overlap 50%, you're not gonna see any lap marks at all. So I like to say we paint lazy, and this is one of the paint lazy ways of painting. Try to walk as little as you can. And I start, I'm gonna overlap, do my edges twice, and then continue from there. So I'll see, I see some people go around and do the edges first. There's no reason to do the edges first, but I'm gonna come, my first lap is gonna be twice because I wanna get, you know, um, if you're overlapping 50%, you gotta hit your first run two times. So here we go. So now the door is all done. I just spray one coat on the door. It's overlapped 50% and that is shot and done. Now, I don't know why anybody wouldn't use an extension. You, didn't, you see, I didn't have to bend over very far and it's easy to keep your gun at the proper angle with an extension. You can reach higher, uh, reach lower, not bending over using a gun extension. Just a nice steady pace across the, across the door 
and it's one and done. I don't let the door dry. I'm going to let it set here for just a few minutes and then open it before it completely dries. If you allow it to dry, you better run your finger or a knife through the weather strip because the weather strip could tack to the door and you could end up ripping the door opener right out of the back of the door. So don't let it dry or make sure you cut this um, weather stripping right here, run a five in one. Uh, if, it's, if you don't raise it before it's dry, run a five in one through here and lift this up and make sure that that's um, not tacked. I don't paint behind the weather strips. I, um, you, you can never see it except when the door raises and lowers and I've never had a customer ever complain about it except one time the customer wanted it painted I did paint it and then the door got really, really hot during the summer. It tapped to the door and uh, stuck and ripped the garage door opener right out of the back. And that's my liability, my responsibility because I painted behind there. So because of liability, responsibility, I do not paint um, behind the weather strips and I don't paint inside the cracks here because that could tack together too when the door closes even after the paint dries and the only time you see this is when the door raises and lowers and i've never had a customer ever question that and ask me why i didn't paint it so there's a door done got one two i only got one side in the back to spray it's about um i don't know what time is it now four o'clock and i started at 10 30 and we're cruising right along i'm pretty sure this thing will be done tomorrow to be out here painting Jack Dunn's house as part of Painter's Care and Jack Dunn amazing as a World War II veteran so we appreciate his service for our country and our freedoms so we thank you Jack and we want to give back and we're here to paint your house and take care of you and make your house look beautiful again so once again Thank you for your service to our country, man. It's absolutely an honor to meet you and paint your house. So thank you very much. You got your uniform with you. This is your actual World War II veterans uniform. Right on. Yep. There you go. There it is. You see it firsthand. And how you're 95 years old now, Jack. I was 95 on uh, uh, February 23rd. February 23rd, and you're still active and exercising, walking through the neighborhood, absolutely amazing. I'm absolutely inspired by you and thankful that you wore this uniform protecting our country. Thank you very much, Jack. Well, Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Yeah. There you have it, Painter's Care, painting a World War II veteran's house. All right, we're gonna head on to the back. I've got everything sprayed up front. I've got downspout sprayed. Um, I've got some touch-ups I gotta do, but we're gonna head to the back. I've gotta mask some windows, mask some doors, and then we're gonna begin finishing spraying the body, and then we'll come out and start getting this front door. This front door's gotta get sprayed so we can get it back up today. So that's very important. As you can see, temperatures are cooling down uh, pretty fast. This weekend coming up, here in Boise, Idaho, it's actually gonna be 25 degrees. Today, um, the temperatures are gonna be around the um, high 50s, low 60s. After today, it's gonna be drastically dropping, so we've gotta get this project done today. So, uh, door's gonna get sprayed today, it'll get hung back up today, and hopefully we'll get everything else done, including the touch-ups. But I'm gonna head in the back, we're gonna finish spraying the back, and by the time I get around doing the trimming towards the later part of the day, we should be able to trim that out but I've got everything set up, ready to go. It's morning time and we're gonna get to work, so let's go. So it is cooling off drastically here in Boise, Idaho, Treasure Valley. And some of the challenges to when the weather starts to cool off is masking starts to not stick as well. Um, you have uh, you know, humid weather that causes the tape not to stick very good. So that's part of the challenges. Also paint, you know, not drying very fast. That becomes a challenge also. And so if you got overlapping colors and stuff, it starts to make the painting process, you know, a little bit more difficult. Um, I've got kind of like overlapping colors. You'll get some overspray on this trim here and stuff. And it has to dry before you can start trimming out but today is going to be a warm enough day that i shouldn't have an issue with that after today temperatures are going to be dropping and i think 
this is going to be the last exterior project for the season. But I've just had somebody ask me today on um, my social media, you know, they needed to get some painting done on their house. They were doing it themselves. And they said, what's the temperature have to be to be able to paint? And for me, once the outside temperatures get below 40 degrees at night, I quit painting outside. Now paints will dry down to, most modern paints these days will dry down to 34 degrees, but it's not ideal conditions to paint in weather like that. And I think that's kind of a drastic measure. You know, if a house was going up for sale or something, you know, you could um, do that, but the ambient temperature of the surface is probably gonna be colder than the outside temperature, which could end up causing you problems. So what's more important than the outside temperature is the surface temperature of what you're actually painting. So that would be the ambient temperature of your surface. So. Um, if it's metal, typically the metal is going to be colder than even the outside temperature a lot of times. So you got to be really careful. I carry a um, infrared thermometer that I can test the temperatures of the surface. What I'm painting by shooting a laser, it's a laser thermometer. I do have uh, some videos on masking tips. I've got my last solo series. I did a whole video with a lot of masking tips. If you want to get some tips and tricks on you know, how to mask an exterior fast and easy, you can go back and watch that video. There's a lot of helpful, helpful tricks when it comes to masking and masking fast. But I typically in my vans, I don't, when it comes to the masking, I carry two sizes of tape. I carry one inch tape and I also carry inch and a half tape. I only carry nine inch paper and, and I carry 72 inch plastic film. That's the only sizes I don't want to have to be remembering or keeping track of too many different sizes of plastic paper and tape. I like to just keep it limited and learn how to make those sizes work for me. Before when I used to carry a bunch of different sizes of paper and tape, it was just kind of a stocking nightmare. Keeping the van stocked was always difficult and then you felt like you're lost when you ran out of one of the sizes. And nowadays I just, if I need it smaller, I cut it. If I need it larger, I run more than one row. Siding is in pretty bad shape. The customer didn't want to replace it. So we're just making it look the best we can considering the circumstances. Just got a couple more windows to mask and then we're gonna get on to spraying, finish spraying the body today. Could have actually got it sprayed yesterday, but had to leave early to go watch a family member play a baseball game. a couple more things to mask here and then looks like we're good to go i gotta mask a couple pipes off we always want to have you know nice straight lines on our pipes we don't want to get over spray on water spigots or hoses so we always mask those off Something like this, we can't get a cardboard shield behind it. So we gotta get masking 
up underneath the house and then we want a straight line on the pipe and you always want to make a new line so the old paint doesn't show so this light actually does remove I thought it was sealed on here and I always like to you know remove the lights it's pretty rare that I don't remove them because you want to paint behind the lights just in case they change the lights and the escutcheon plate is smaller you want to you want it to be painted behind there so um you know some people some guys just mask them off you could say you don't want to mess with electrical wires because you're not an electrician and i guess that could be you know a valid reason um but i always i always remove the lights most of the time and when you put them back on it's always good to test them whether they're functioning or not um, to see whether you got your wires hooked up correctly um, and and that, that they're working because it's nothing worse than having to drive 45 minutes across town to um, go put the white light back on wrong, right because it was put on wrong so and that's happened so to me and my crew all right i've got this all ready to start spraying i'm going to get some cardboard shields back here we're going to spray this we're going to go out and get that front door ready probably gonna looks like we've got gutters that probably full of debris um we do this is gonna i'm gonna have to get a bucket to help clean those things out they're a big mess but i'm gonna work on that so i was just gonna talk a little bit about you know controlling over spray and if you're watching my spray pattern while i'm spraying you might see a little bit of fingering and kind of some of the trade-off if you increase the pressure you could get rid of more of the fingering but um, then you're going to have more overspray so the fingering is not going to show up at all you know on this exterior at all because of the wood grain so i'm not concerned about fingering as much as i'm concerned about controlling overspray so um, i'm controlling the pressure turning the pressure down a little bit um, so i don't have overspray give and take and a little bit of the fingering so uh with these tips these production tips if i increase the pressure you know at the gun around to 2800 psi i can almost eliminate it and get a nice feathered edge but that's only important if i was spraying trim or spraying a door spraying the body of this house you know where it's um a lot of it is wood grain and stuff you know if you overlap 50 percent make sure you're getting it on heavy enough you don't see any fingering at all so just keep that in mind um when it comes to your spray pattern if you use a titan hea tip that will even eliminate um, all your fingering and then you can decrease your pressure significantly on your pump down to around a thousand psi at the gun so i'm getting ready to spray this front door now it's been it's a stained grade door that's been painted you know multiple times it's got a doorknob that um it's pretty old and when you're dealing with doorknobs like this that are old it's pretty risky to remove them so uh, I'm gonna mask this doorknob off I'm not gonna remove it if you remove it and it's broke the internal parts you know, a lot of times when they're really old the internal parts will come apart and you won't get it back together and I've had to you know replace doorknobs um, that were aged and old so I'm going to mask it off and we've had a lot of success masking you just put your masking like a sixteenth of an inch onto the handle and and it's amazing it won't actually get paint on it and you just don't want to mask onto the white at all because then 
when you pull your masking, then you'll see white, but we're going a dark blue color. So and this doorknob has been on here painted before multiple times and they are not replacing it. So I'm just gonna, you know, mask this thing off and we're just about ready to spray this thing. And I wanna get it, it's gonna kind of a vibrant blue. So I wanna get it sprayed right away. Hopefully the sun will pop itself out here so it'll dry it faster. Um, this is a little bit cool outside. The sun pops it out a darker color. It'll dry it really fast, but we're gonna set it on couple buckets load up our 440 we'll be spraying it with a 3 310 tip now once I get on the hinges mass I just so I just overrun my tape a little bit and then I just take and trim it with my knife Just like that. I'm using, it's again, using frog tape. This is frog tape blue. And this is the same. It's again, I've um, used it a lot. It's the same as the green frog tape. So it has, you know, a polymer that swells up when any liquid hits it, including paint. So nothing's gonna bleed through onto the hinges or bleed where you don't want it to go so important to you know, use this tape and it's just the the differences is just packaged um in multi-packs and it costs a little bit cheaper because it's um in multi-packs then the paper isn't a premium paper like the green tape which makes it a little less expensive also It's a solid with doors thing is dang heavy so it's all it's been previously painted in good shape um, it's pretty clean I'm just gonna nothing has been caulked before I'm just gonna lightly sand it This is going to um, actually be probably, probably not one coat, but two coats. So we're going to see here shortly. I'm going to be using a fine finish. I got a 410. Let's see. I got a 310. I like to use, I typically like when I'm doing doors, I like to use a 310. I got a couple 410s in my tip saver. What do I um, let's see? Here's a 310 here. Testing out, I got in my tip saver TS99. So, tip saver came out with an environmental friendly solution to put your tips in instead of paint thinner and mineral spirits or lacquer thinner so you know, see how seeing it's actually like all this paint is really soft and comes off pretty easily so when I spray doors I always like to use a gun extension i like to use a six inch gun extension i can reach on the other side of the door a lot easier with a gun extension and then it makes it so the paint when you're loading it up and unloading cleaning it doesn't splatter out of the tip as much pretty vibrant blue this looks almost identical to the can there you have it look at that i got a tight hva gauge Right here, 
so I can see my pressure at the pump. I want to first test my tip. Um, this tip has been used before. This door has got like wood grain and it's kind of beat up a little bit. It's been painted multiple times. So it doesn't have like this glassy smooth finish that um, would be critical. So there it is. That's what it looks like wet. So that shot out. So here we go. We're going to spray this door. And um, it looks like, I mean, the way that thing shot out there, there's a possibility it would cover in two coats. We got bugs flying around, which is, I don't know if we got a garage. Ideally, I will spray them and then put them in a garage. I do got to say for a for a vibrant color that is absolutely incredible coverage PPG has nailed it on this one that's for sure um, that's could almost get away with one coat on that I there's a lot of edges and angles and stuff I'm gonna let that dry. Um, now that I got some sun, which is really nice, that'll skim over here pretty quick and then I'll shoot another coverage. But that's, I thought it was gonna be pretty translucent going on and I thought it was gonna be like four or five coats, but that's, I'm absolutely blown away. I love, love that coverage. Um, I was a little bit worried about that going over the white and now I'm not. That's pretty critical when you're spraying to have the good, good lighting so you can see your overlaps and making sure you're not getting any dry edges. Because if you get any dry edges, you're going to see those when the door dries. You want it to overlap 50% and each overlap gel together and get a nice glassy finish. Otherwise, you're going to get flashing on your door. That looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna switch tips. I'm gonna use this tip on my gutters now. You know, there's certain tools I carry in my vehicle. Instead of putting a drop cloth out here and getting a drop cloth, you know, blue paint all over it, I'm just on the dirt. So I can simply just take a rake and where this blue was, I can just rake this dirt and who knows, the, the customer may have a rake that you can use or you can keep one in your vehicle and just rake it out and the blue is all gone. So there you have it. 
And that's why I didn't put a drop cloth down. So to answer, you know, any of those questions of people um, that were a little bit shocked, you know, that I was uh, painting the door, you know, right here in the dirt and that I was going to leave blue dirt here for you for the next two months. It's simply gone, resolved. If you're doing any, any other spray in, be pretty critical to move that door indoors. in the garage we usually will move it in the garage and and then close the garage door but i'm a little concerned about maybe bugs and stuff even in the garage and i want it to skim over you know pretty fast out here so i'm going to have it set in the sun it's away from any trees there's no wind One of the drawbacks to a shorter hose is you got to move your pump, but it takes less material to load up. So that's one of the positives. So if you're doing a door and you only have a half a gallon, that's where it can make a difference. Cardboard shields up in my gutters. This way I'll keep overspray off the roof and this is why you don't have to continue to buy cardboard shields they'll last you years it seems like a big expense you know initially when you got to buy a bunch of them but you can use them over and over and over again in your gutters why i like to have multiple sprayers on the job if you want to paint fast and efficient got to have multiple sprayers and you can't roll up a cord like this either um, it's not the fast and efficient way to do that but, um, out of five gallon buckets I'm just gonna put it in a gallon bucket instead of having to clean sprayers up because like that door we want to just let that door set there and shoot another coat it's going to just cost me time loading up or cleaning up a sprayer, loading up, reloading. So having multiple sprayers is going to make you money in the long run. So it's best to invest in multiple sprayers. So we've got, I'm going to be spraying with a Titan, uh, the gutters with a Titan 410. I've got just a short hose hooked up to it. It's only been like five, ten minutes. Our door's almost skimmed over and dried. One thing, a color like that, being that vibrant blue, white overspray on the gutters could be an issue. So you want to make sure you don't have any overspray. I'm going to take, put the second coat on that door and move it into the garage. Our door is all dry, just about all dry. Looks pretty, pretty dang good. So I got my gutters all sprayed, got the door sprayed. I don't have anything else really to spray so I can get water in all the sprayers. So I'm, I'm not gonna go to the process of, you know, cleaning the entire thing. I'll just get water in it. Like I say, the water will help dissolve the paint over time. 
Now this window trim is it's smooth window trim. So I'm actually rolling it. It doesn't have like grain to it. So I'm rolling it to get the paint on fast. And then I'm going back over it and, and laying it out. Nasty spider. So it has you know, nice looking brush strokes on it instead of stippling. Even though the trim is pretty beat up and it is going to take definitely two coats over this gray. You can tell right now. Typically like to come back the next day, you know, after painting the house and just walk it after it's all done, after all the paint is dry. A lot of times you'll just see things you wouldn't have seen. first the day you're working and still painting because you know things can still be wet the body could still be wet I mean anything can technically still be wet depending on weather conditions I guess is what it comes down to I always I do get asked every now and then you know how come I'm not spraying the tram I always hand brush and roll the tram it's gonna make it last longer you want to get it you know pushed in help bonding and adhesion it takes a lot more time to mask this off than it would be to mask it and to spray it versus just hand brushing it and the hand brush look is a pretty nice look these gutters are pretty beat up, so I'm gonna. If I see anything that. needs to be hand brushed on them. They've been brushed before, so. I typically still don't like to put brush strokes on them, but. There's some spots on them that need to be brushed to enhance. You know, adhesion on them. Do you have to say this is like also something extremely unusual? I've never seen a house trimmed out with window trim like this before. So this, like I say, this is, I think I've said it before in this video, this is actually brick mold that would go around a door, you know, where um, brick or rock meets up to the door. Uh, so it's kind of unusual and so just different painting that I typically do. The siding too is extremely old. The siding is way past you know the life expectancy of the siding. It really needs to be replaced but Once again, it just really comes down to customer budget expectations. But the, this isn't, once again, it's not wood siding. So it's a, just a composite material just made of basically um, wood fiber and glue and primer and just pressed oak like wood. And so it's typically not expected to last i think it's like got a 15 to 20 year lifespan and this house is significantly older than that but you know not everybody can reside their house has the money to do so so we you know work with their budgets and you know try to make it look the best we can as a painter um, to meet their budget and continue to last, look good, um, be weather protected, but sometimes you can't just replace everything or strip it all down to bare wood, which would cost a significant more amount of money. 
I'd be paid, charging the customer three times more to do that if I had to completely prep this entire house. So I do get asked in every video where I'm painting a house, the last solo series, people were asking me how much I'd charge for the house I did and that one was $5,400 and it was a 3,500 square foot house. This house is probably around 1,100 square feet and I would charge around $3,400 to do this house. But um, this is part of painter's care and program I started to you know, demonstrate and show that painters do actually care you know, about other painters, our community, um, our country. And this gentleman is a World War II veteran. And when I found that out, I contacted PPG and asked them if they would supply the paint, you know, to paint this house. And I told them I would uh, do it labor free if they supplied the paint. And uh, PPG, no hesitation, um, stepped up and provided the paint. So extremely grateful for them. And not only did they provide paint, but they provided their best paint. So we're painting with <laughs> timeless. I gotta say there, the color I put on the front door was a vibrant blue. Um, absolutely incredible the coverage on it and I'm gonna say I had people asking me on my social media well what do I think of this because I've already posted stuff on social media and it sprays really really nice I really like how it sprays I do have to say um, usually white paints and all the products I've used especially sure Williams splatter really bad and and this product here is not splattering at all. I've had no issues with it at all so far. So that for a white makes me extremely happy. And I wouldn't have expected it to cover um, in one coat. It's um, doing fairly good, but it's definitely, it's definitely two coats. There's no matter how heavy I put it on, it would not cover in one coat. All right, so we're just working our way around the back, doing our trim. And here's one of the reasons why, you know, I carry these razor blades. My masking, a little bit of overspray got through the masking obviously I didn't have it um, mask enough right there so got a little overspray right on the glass and the razor blade takes care of it fast and easy so simple simple little tool must have tool it's about two o'clock a little after two and I've got the tram out front one coated it's gonna take a second coat the second coat goes a lot faster than the first coat got the trim on the side done too it's not a lot of trim on this house so it should go pretty fast Nothing too difficult to trim out either. It's all really simple trim. I always get people asking too, you know, do you do the sides of the trim, which that's called um, Frenching the trim and it's not very common where I am in Idaho. It's really rare that you see that actually done and I do do that. It's an added charge if you want it like that because it's not um, industry standard up here to do it. So if you want it done, which um, 
Some people will argue it looks better, and I would have a tendency to agree, but it's a lot of work on, not on this house, it wouldn't be as much work, but, um, but most houses it's significantly more work to trim it out, trim the sides of it out. The term we use here at least is called Frenching it. Getting ready to hang the door back up now. If you want something challenging to do, hang a solid wood door solo. That's not an easy task to do. So just gotta get the second coat on these windows. And I'm gonna start hanging lights and downspouts. So we got our freshly painted numbers that we're gonna put back on. Should add a nice accent to this gray house. Oh, there's so many holes here, I don't even know which ones. I assume it's the freshest looking holes, be my guess. The rest of them, I didn't know which ones to caulk. Now I know, so I'm gonna caulk the other ones and touch them up. They were missing a nail. I always keep spares of these nails too. I'm gonna get one of those, put it in there, but there's our freshly painted numbers. Look pretty nice. Oh, we got some lights back up. This is our, my final hour basically working here. You know, it's just a matter of getting the last, I got two gables, I got this gable trim to do up here and then I got one other gable trim to do and that should be like you say about an hour and I'll be done then uh, we're just got a lot of the cleanup done yesterday um, so I don't have to do it today but right now I've got to get up here on this gable they've got to lean a ladder up on the side of the house and this is kind of just a handy little trick if you lean your ladder with the rubber boots up on the up on the house the rubber boots could tack to the paint especially if i sprayed the body today it's been um it's been two days since i've actually sprayed that right there so it probably wouldn't tack but if you just put plastic on your roof boots here or not roof boots but your ladder boots they um, will not tack to the house. And the letter printing, you don't want the letter printing on the plastic exposed. Otherwise, the letter printing could actually, could actually um, come off on the house. So I'm just gonna put some plastic on these roof boots here. I keep saying roof boots, but they're ladder boots. Um, the wind, kind of fighting the wind here a little bit. Doesn't have to be anything perfect. So, just going to wrap this up around here. And any plastic will work. It's just convenient. I have some, you know, plastic mask or, you know, with me. And I just put this plastic on, you know, I usually put new plastic on every job that I do. The last thing you want is your nice paint job, the ladder boot. When you move your ladder, it peeling the paint off because then it just creates 
a touch up to do, which isn't necessarily all that bad. It's just more work. It's got tape and plastic on it. It's not gonna tack to the paint. Numbers inside. We got self-leveling ladder feet, which are absolutely amazing. If you've got extension ladders, I always have at least one ladder that has self-leveling feet on them because there's always going to be a situation where your surface isn't level and you're going to be trying to grab a rock or a stick or something to try to lav level your ladder. Those level self-leveling feet, simple, easy to use, are made by Werner. And it takes about an hour to install them. I got a video on how to install those things. Um, there's other types of levelers out there where you got to move a pin or something, which is just takes more time. The self-leveling ones are by far the best easy to use does make the ladder a little bit heavier so you got to be aware of that if you're not very strong carrying ladders but um you know it's probably another 20 pounds or so to the ladder but it's well well worth it so i'm just hand doing fascia once again i've I always get people asking me, why not spray the fascia like you're spraying the body of the house? And it, um, it's going to look nicer, last longer if you actually hand brush and roll it, get better penetration, adhesion, the body of the house. If there's places that need better penetration, adhesion, or back rolling, I always back roll it before I do the painting or the spraying. Sometimes I paint the drip metal. It all depends. Like if this fascia is going to be black and, and I had a black roof, I would actually, because and it's white underneath here, I'd want to get that paint underneath that fascia. And I would actually spray um, the drip metal black. And then I would um, turn around and do the fascia, hand do the fascia. But um because if you use like a 208 tip and spray this metal black the edge of the roof is black you won't even see any flat or any overspray on that edge of the roof and if you shoot it up at an angle the overspray will go up in the air it'll dry before it actually hits the roof lands on the roof so it's a technique that we use to paint drip metal you gotta just take your time get your brush it's like doing interior cut-ins, get the tips of your brush up underneath that metal, flatten out your bristles so you don't get paint on the drip metal like somebody has already done previously. They weren't flattening their bristles out flat enough to get them up inside there. When you got dark drip metal white fascia, it really shows up really bad. One of the drawbacks of fall, leaf, bucket full of leaves. It's always good to keep your buckets that you're not using lids on them in fall. Otherwise, you're either gonna have all kinds of leaves in your paint. That's never fun to deal with. You know, one of the things I'm looking for when it comes to an exterior paint is how it sprays. And, you know, um, a lot of uh, do-it-yourself paints, you know, they, when you um, spray them, they run really easy. So it, from a professional term standpoint, we say the paint doesn't hang very well if it runs really easy. And this paint, I put it on, it's pretty heavy brushing rolling and spraying and i haven't got any runs so it hangs incredibly well and i've sprayed it on you know pretty dang thick and it's hanging really well and 
Another thing, you know, the, the product itself, it says it's a one coat coverage paint, but from a professional painter standpoint, I never believe that until I actually test it myself because it's, um, we're just accustomed to doing two coats because a professional painter typically is going to, you know, two coat their jobs to just make sure it's covered, you know, a hundred percent. And you gotta say this coat, the front door, if I wanted to shoot it in just one coat, the front door is a vibrant blue, which we can show you what it is. It was unbelievable how it covered and I was extremely shocked. I did spray two coats just to ensure that it had, you know, good mill thickness um, and then that it ensure that it was covered 100% and it was um, sprayed out nice, looked amazing and it's borderline you know, one coat. This gray was definitely the body of the house covered in one coat. The white is um, it's definitely taken over the gray. It's taking two coats. It's not a one coat coverage, but it's but it's but it's very very close to a one coat um, coverage paint. The white, but when it comes to whites, I'm more particular about not the coverage, but its ability to not drip and not splatter and so it stays on your roller or your brush without splattering and in that respect it's performed really really well i'm extremely happy with the product when it comes to that so so far i really really like the product this product from ppg the product timeless it's a i uh, when i when i paint my exteriors i i will only paint exteriors with a lifetime warranty coating if it's not a lifetime warranty coating i'm not going to use it and we all know or not all of us but you should know no paint lasts a lifetime it just speaks for the quality of the paint that it is you know it, within their range of paints you know most paint companies will have you know a lifetime warranty paint you know a 25 year warranty paint and down the line and it kind of speaks to the quality of their paints you know within those line of paints that they carry so i'm only only using lifetime warranty paints only the best quality paints and I would actually next season use PPG's paint, this timeless product. Um, I'm not sure where they actually sell it other than um, my local Home Depot. And I'm not sure I wanna go to Home Depot to buy my paints. I'd rather go into a professional paint store on a daily basis to buy my paints. But um, we'll see, maybe they're carried in another location around the treasure valley it's interesting about ladders is i've used everything from 60 foot booms to small step stools four foot ladders eight foot ladders 12 foot ladders 24 foot extension ladders 30 foot ladders and this is something that might be interesting i've had more falls on six foot ladders than any other ladder that I've ever used. And partly because you, you get too confident, overconfident on six foot ladders. A couple other things I'll you know, share about this paint also is I really like the body, the consistency of the paint. Um, it's very smooth and you know, it brushes really, really well. Um, a lot of paints these days, exterior paints, you know, dry too fast, um, which in some conditions, you know, if you've got wet weather coming up, those conditions are really good. I know uh, Kelly, I think it's Kelly Moore or Miller Paint. One of them has a, a paint that I've used that um, it dries really slow in hot weather. And, and then um, Sherwin Williams has a product called Resilience that in wet weather, it's um, perfect if you got rain, you know, with the you know, possibility of it raining that day, you know, so, um, you know, depending on the conditions, you know, you have multiple products, you know, you could possibly use this product. Right now they, it's in the 60s um so temperature wise it's pretty ideal product now i 
it's I haven't painted it, you know, when it's 100 degrees outside or 90 degrees, so I don't have an opinion, you know, yet how it performs in super hot weather. Oh, well, right now in this cool weather, it's performing extremely well. There is our door. If you haven't seen the door, so I talked about the door, the vibrant blue. That is a vibrant blue and incredibly that covered, you know, in one coat over white, over pure white, which I think is um, just absolutely unbelievable. So um, sprayed out very, very well. So now I'm up here. Um, after I've sprayed this, you know, I realize you know, getting a close look at it, it really needs to be back rolled. And ideally, this back rolling, you know, should be done first, especially if you'll be able to see like dark colors, you'll see where you actually back rolled, you know, if you do it after the fact. So, but um, here's another good point about this paint. Everywhere where I've done this and it's dried, the, um, the color consistency is like spot on. You can't even see where I back rolled, which a lot of paints, um, you know, you cannot get away with that. This isn't a very dark color, so it lends itself to um, making it easier to do this. Now, if I was doing that front door color, you could never get away, you know, with doing this. So you just gotta look at the situation the circumstances you're in and, you know, do what is right, you know, for you at that time, that point in time. Knows what I was spraying too. I was in this area up at this peak. Um, I was wondering what this was up here. And it was a, it was a hornet's nest, a wasp nest, just what was left of it. And I'm just gonna scrape it off with my, two-edge knife and then brush over that because I, I it was weird to use something that I could see from when I was spraying there's a nail right there too I'm gonna get a hammer I usually have a hammer with me but when I'm prepping I need to get hammer that nail in I think this, um, it comes to doing trim. The, this is the one part of painting that is just extremely enjoyable, very relaxing. It's not like super labor intensive. It's not hard, you know, like climbing up and down the ladders, you know, could be considered maybe labor intensive, but it's just pretty dang relaxing to just, just hand do trim not have to wear a respirator and spray all day. When I was spraying this house, I was spraying all day and you just got a respirator on and that's never comfortable. And now you can just relax, put some headphones on if that's your thing, listen to some music or a podcast and just start brushing and rolling trim. There's a situation right there, some uneven ground. A little bit uneven, got myself leveling feet. Here's another thing, make sure, man, I see it time and time again, apprentices don't set their spikes when they're on dirt or grass with a ladder. You gotta have your spikes set. And I made the mistakes one time, having my ladder set at too great of an angle, a 24 foot ladder and the ladder feet came out from underneath it and I came down with the ladder and how I survived that one without getting injured, I have no idea. I just held on to the ladder as it went down and hit the ground. And after that, I never once uh, made a mistake of setting my ladder at too great of an angle or not having you know, my seat, seat um, set properly. So if you're in grass, get those spikes out or dirt if you're on concrete you want the pads and not the spikes if you have the spikes out on concrete that's not going to be good traction and your ladder could slide so ladder safety 
extremely, extremely important. So typically, I mean, working solo, I've got two buckets with me. You know, I've got my body bucket, got my, my trim bucket everywhere I go. That way I don't have to, if you think you're gonna remember it, you probably won't. So um, I like to, if I see something that I think needs to be touched up, I'm gonna get it right then and there. Something that should have been back rolled that was exposed when you're spraying, just get it right then and there. There's another, show you a handy little tool with this bucket I got set up um, got a brush buddy in this and it's a little copper gadget created by a painter so it's another one of those four painters by painters little gadgets that I absolutely love and use it all the time may get some questions almost every video I do that I have my tool bag with me get people asking me what's in my tool bag and so just the other day i shot a video what's in my tool bag doing when i'm painting exteriors so you can search that video out if you want to know what i carry what type of tool bag i carry and what's in it it shows you every little tool that i'm carrying in there today on this job Doing an exterior, so if that's something you want to know, just go to my channel, Paint Life TV, which you're here already if you're watching this video. There you have it. Our project is all complete. Day three. So it went into day three, about 19 hours total to complete this project. This was an amazing opportunity put together, um, partnered with PPG Paints using Timeless Paints, painting a World War II veteran's house. So I had the opportunity to meet him, talk to him, and see his uniform, which was absolutely incredible. The house is, I got a few things I gotta do, just picking up, cleaning up, but once again, 19 hours working on this house, solo, all alone. It's about, once again, about 1,100 square feet, somewhere in that range with an attached garage, and I got it all completed and done. If you have any questions and comments, about the process that I went through doing this house, leave it in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you wanna see any of my upcoming videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, bang that notification bell that's next to it, goes with it. If you don't hit the notification bell, subscribing doesn't do anything. It's free, simple, and easy to do. It's a simple way to help support us here at Paint Life TV, teaching you how to paint all across the world. Hopefully we'll see you watching our next video. Ow.